was the Bible copied from ancient texts by Billy Carson. Think about this for a minute. If your God is all knowing, omniscient, omnipotent, all loving, never changing, and all these terminologies that they like to tell you, and you understand that as to be a supposed fact, never question it. But then at the same time, you can be quote unquote cast into a lake of fire for all eternity for punishment and torment for sins that supposedly, according to that same book and text, you had committed before the foundation of the earth. In other words, you were born a heathen, you were born a sinner, you were born this and born that. You're told that you're this person and that you're that person and you're so evil and then you're coming out of the womb as this evil entity before you even have a chance to for form your very first thoughts, cohesive thoughts. And then as you're growing up, you're told and programmed and it's beaten to your head nonstop that you're a bum, you're a loser, you're a sinner, you're nothing, you're worthless until you get on your knees and grovel. And then you tell me that that's an all-knowing, all-loving God that you're worshiping. When in true reality, it's a big fear factor. And all you're doing is trying to save your own skin by following the rituals and hoping that in the end, it was accurate. And the evidence of this is the fact that you don't do any research. You, didn't, you don't know what I'm about to tell you tonight because you never looked into it. You never dug into the original version of the biblical text and sourced the material and where it came from. You didn't break it down into Aramaic like I did into the original tongues to figure out what the original text that was converted into some of the Testaments were saying. You didn't look at the Torah. You didn't learn Hebrew. I have books here where I study Hebrew text. You didn't break down the Hebrew text to find out where the Torah got its information and then break those down into even more ancient texts to see what the source material was. You just took it hook, line, and sinker and said, you know what, this is what I got to do because everybody told me I had to do it. And if I don't do it, I'm going to suffer for eternity. So this is a big part of why I do what I do. It's about education. It's about awakening. It's about showing people that before you jump headfirst into something and stay with it for the rest of your life, maybe you should take a pause and drop some of that fear and start digging a little bit deeper just so you can get a better understanding. And after that, if you still feel that that's the thing for you, phenomenal. I have plenty of friends that are Christians, plenty of friends that are Muslims. Hey, and we get along great. We hang out. We do great things together. I don't. But at the same time, hey, they know where I stand and I know where they stand. And if they, after having the knowledge and the wisdom, if that's for them, then that's for them. That's phenomenal. But at least give yourself the opportunity to take a look and see more information about what you have literally programmed yourself to believe in and also your offspring and their offspring and their offspring for future generations. What are you beating into somebody's head? Tonight, we're not going to go deep into a lot of the logistics of it. We're going to be talking about source material. Where did some of this stuff come from? And it's so much that I've got to do it in stages because it's a lot of text, all right? To keep this video safe from demonetization and to keep it uh, running, I'm going to use source material. And that source material primarily is going to be coming from Encyclopedia Britannica. And so for that case, I don't have to worry about demonetization. J.C. Clark says, so do you pray too? I agree with what you say about Christianity, but I'm programmed to pray. Praying is phenomenal. I pray every single day. And that's a great question. See, a lot of people think that I don't believe in God because I don't believe in religion. <clears throat> and the fact of the matter is, and I've said this a thousand times, but some people are just finding me for the first time. I believe in a creator of the universe, of the multiverse even. Because why? My studies in quantum physics have showed me that there is proof and evidence that we are living inside of a creation, that there is a creator of all, and that this creation is imbued with divine energy. And that divine spark that created everything in the entire multiverse is in every single atom in my body. And because of that, I am divine and the divine is divine. So that means I am God and God is me. We are all God walking in the flesh. As a matter of fact, 
God is experiencing what it's like to be a human being in the third dimension, walking in the flesh through each and every one of us. Through each and every one of us. There's only one entity. There's only one consciousness. The fact that J.C. Clark, uh, maybe somewhere across this planet watching this, and I'm sitting here across the other side of the planet watching this, doesn't mean anything. There's only one person. When I'm talking to J.C. Clark and you guys, I'm talking to myself. And when J.C. is talking to other people, he's talking to himself. We are all slightly different expressions of the same one consciousness. Separation is an illusion. Distance is an illusion. It's an illusion of the third dimension. Above the third dimension, distance doesn't exist. Time doesn't exist. The past, the present, and future happen all at the same time. And there's oneness there, higher than the third dimension. That's something that we should all aspire to. And so I do pray, and how I pray is like this. When I'm um, happy about something, but number one is I thank. I always give thanks. I don't give thanks and oh, thank you, Lord, and all that kind of stuff, because the Lord is a whole nother, that's a whole nother podcast. But what I do is I give thanks. I say thank you with pure heart and gratitude and soul for myself to the creator of the universe. And when I am doing things like eating food or a meal, I command that the food be safe and healthy for my body. Now, I'm not going to command over a Hershey's bar. I'm not going to command over uh, uh, biscuits and gravy and collard greens because I know that's going to give me diabetes. <laughs> I'm not going to pray over a plate of slop because I'm smart. But if it's food that's good and healthy, I want to command that it's safe. In other words, that there's no salmonella in it, that there's nothing in there that's going to be detrimental to my body, no bacteria that was unforeseen, things like that. When I travel, I command that I arrive at my destination safely, things like that. That's my method of praying, knowing the end and be believing in the end before the end. And why can I command it? I command it because the same power of commandment and the same power of control and creation is inside of my body. I have a fractal of the creator living inside of me. And so because of that, I walk in that power. And so I'm a walking prayer. And so are you. Everyone is a walking prayer. What is praying? Praying is looking to cast a spell. A Christian may not want to admit that because they're going to say, oh, that's of the demons and all that kind of stuff. No. When you pray, you're trying to cast a spell. When something goes wrong and you start praying, you're trying to say words outside of your vocal cords to an outside entity, but you're really speaking to the universe. And you're trying to get things to alchemically convert to your favor. It's, it's a spell. You're trying to cast a spell. That's what praying is. But when you pray from a position of weakness where you're begging, hoping, and wishing, and you're pushing out that low frequency energy into the universe, you're going to get more of that back. And so I pray from a, a position of power. And my position is thank you, unconditional love, and commanding. If somebody cuts me off in traffic, I don't get angry and start chasing them down and flip them off the middle finger and pulling out a gun and all this kind of stuff. I just say, bless that person. They could be in a bad situation. They could have got a phone call that their kid just got hurt in school. Uh, they could be having a med medical situation. Their wife could be having a baby at home or something. Or they could just be careless. Bless them. Let them make it to their destination safely. That's how I pray. You see, you see the mindset, you see the difference in thinking there. It's a totally different way of thinking, a totally different way of seeing the world. It's a totally different way of of living through spirituality. Spirituality, if you've ever seen that meme where you have a fishbowl and you have a fish inside of the fishbowl and the fishbowl's in the ocean, that's religion. Outside of the fishbowl, swimming around the free ocean is the fish. That's spirituality. And so we have to come to that point where we recognize there's a difference. When you hear the word religion, that's not spirituality. Two separate things. I'm a spiritual person. I'm not a religious person. And I understand now through many years of dedicated research and traveling the world and studying that the power, the true power to help and bless people in this world and the true power to make a true difference and higher levels of consciousness availability is only through spirituality because religion puts you in a box and it the box has a cap on it and it only lets you full video and playlist linked below spiritual <gasps> news television <laughs> e -E
Creation 9.